Seven Days to Die is a zombie FPS survival game, released in 2013, the game is still readily available through early access. Within this game, players are working to gather resources and build up a base. It's a bit of a race against the clock, essentially players have until the seventh day to establish a strong base as this will bring in a large horde of undead into the area. If you manage to survive, you can continue rebuilding your structures and further fortifying them for the next attack. Players will also use this time to find more resources, craft better weapons, armor, and useful tools. Despite being in early access for nearly a decade now, it still has a strong following, with new players continuing to find this game. <laughs>Rust has become a popular game online, it throws players into an online MMO where you wash onto shore with nothing. Completely naked and on a strange land where everything wants to kill you, it's a tough uphill battle from the start, the game is all about survival. You'll slowly gather up resources, hunt down critters, craft up bases, join a clan, and begin some epic raids. Outside of trying to survive and keeping up the vitals, you'll spend plenty of type building. There's quite a bit of crafting in this game. From the start of your gameplay journey, you'll need to craft up simple tools to a basic campfire just to keep your character from dying off. However, as you progress, you can start to really build up some fortresses to keep your character safe or gear protected. Although, you'll want to maintain your builds because there are areas like stability and decay which can play a role in your structure standing over time. First day Z may seem like your typical zombie survival game, but it's more robust than that. In the title, you will create your character and be placed in the area known as Cherneris. Here zombies are everywhere and the only thing that matters is survival, but how you survive there is up to you. Unlike other games with other players, the only goal here is to survive. This means you should always be aware of your surroundings and decide how to deal with other players you meet. Resources can be found in the game, which also places emphasis on the crafting system thanks to the latest new updates, but doing this requires both patience and experience. New players often have trouble even finding food and basic equipment. Additionally, full official servers can be particularly difficult places to collect gear. Chances are you know all about No Man's Sky by now. Unfortunately, this was a hugely anticipated video game that launched, missing some notable features. Fans were quick to criticize the title, but fortunately, the developers were able to turn things around after several years of updates. Overall, No Man's Sky has players going around in a seemingly endless galaxy. Using a ship, players would travel to different planets where you'll study the fauna, wildlife, and resources available. These planets are randomly generated, so you'll have a wide range of different creatures, fauna, and even conditions to deal with. You'll find some planets could be relatively tame while others are overwhelmingly hot or toxic. As a result, players are constantly mining for resources to make repairs, for profit, or simply use to build up a base so that you're able to farm, have access to storage, and keep away from the harsh elements. Ark Survival Evolved is another big hit survival title that can often be compared to Rust. It's another game that throws you into the wilderness with nothing but your fists to keep you protected. From there, it's a battle to gather resources, maintain your vitals, fight off hostile enemies like dinosaurs, and further advance your character technologically. You might start with some simple handcrafted spears or tools, but eventually, you'll have advanced weaponry such as guns. Finally, of course, just like Rust, there is some focus on building. Enough resources could grant you the ability to place up walls and structures to keep you protected or further store your gear. 
Arc 2 is expected to be released soon. You will see that the number of active players of this game will start to decrease as players move on to the sequel. Don't Starve is another game on this list that's been around for quite a few years now. So chances are you already know about this survival game, players step into the role of a scientist named Wilson, who gets plopped down into a random world where you're simply forced into surviving. This means exploring the map for valuable resources, gathering items, finding out what to do with said items, and hoping that nothing results in your untimely death. Because of the hostile enemies that can pop up and the darkness itself proving to hurt Wilson without a light source, you'll need to craft quite a bit just to get through the day. Everything from tools, lighting, structures, clothing, weapons, among other helpful survival gear, is available to aid Wilson during his run. Icarus is a survival sandbox game with one of the most rich character customization and crafting systems in the genre. Developer Rocketworks and game runner Dean Hall, creator of DayZ, wanted to shake up the genre with a session-based, mission-focused concept. The result was a survival sandbox game with the feel of an action-adventure title. To complete each mission and survive to tell the tale, you have to tailor your build and the equipment you choose to start with. Icarus also challenges a staple of most sandbox games that structures are permanent. While the game is open world and you can build anything anywhere, the map is wiped and reset at the end of the mission. Icarus goes far beyond basic measures of hunger, thirst, and health. It supports the most detailed and dynamic weather system of its kind, constantly affecting how you plan and progress through the game. Mission-based gameplay loops also enable implementations of a mission timer, after which your seeker is left to perish on the planet's surface. The first release from developer N Night Games, The Forest has been a huge hit. An open-world survival horror game that also features crafting and building, the game also has a decently fleshed-out storyline unlike most games in this genre. You start off as the survivor of a plane crash on a peninsula to find out that a cannibal has taken your son. Sadly, Timmy is just going to have to wait a while so you can gear up, explore, and slaughter cannibals and mutants. Resources are plentiful in the game, lack of sleep has no effect other than low energy, which can be cured by eating. Likewise, sanity does not pose a significant challenge to the player. It includes adjustable difficulty options from peaceful to hard survival with stronger enemies and harder survival. Green Hell is a survival game set in an Amazonian rainforest. Trapped and forced into trying to survive, the game also throws players into a psychological thriller. The rainforest will take a toll on the player's mind, bringing out some strange hallucinations. Meanwhile, while you're exploring the rainforest, gathering supplies to keep your vitals up, and battling your hallucinations, you'll need to figure out what to craft up with your resources. You can build up a base along with weapons, armor, medical dressings, tools, and fishing gear. Without spoiling too much of the narrative, the game focuses on the protagonist hunting down his missing wife Mia. Oh, shit. Minecraft, we probably don't have to explain this game to you or spend much time here. This survival game throws players into a randomly generated world. 
From there, you're left to explore, venture through the different biomes, hunt down resources, build up shelters, and fight off the mobs of enemies that come your way. There are two modes available for players in this game. Survival mode has players figuring out what resources to gather to craft certain items. From there, it's all about expanding, creating farmlands, building up additional structures, and mining for more precious resources underground. You'll also find that enemies like skeletons, spiders, and zombies will attack you. Furthermore, you have to ensure that your character is fed otherwise, you can lose health over time. Meanwhile, the creative mode allows players to not worry about mobs or their hunger status. Here you also have all the items readily available to spawn. It might eliminate the challenge, but it does give players the ability to build creatively right from the start. Swedish developer Red Beat Interactive created one of the most innovative survival sandbox games in the genre when they conceived of Raft. The concept was so unique that Raft spurred an entire subgenre of survival sandbox games on PC and mobile platforms. Its unique premise turns exploration on its head, where you stay in place building your raft base, while a randomly generated infinite ocean world brings resources floating past you. The fact that this concept was born from a group project in a school for game development really makes you appreciate that some of the best and original game ideas come from novice developers. The world of Raft is post-apocalyptic, where something has caused the oceans to rise to a point where human and animal survivors have scrambled to the few scraps of land that remain. There are plenty of threats to contend with at every stage, including dive-bombing birds, exploding fish, and malfunctioning robots. Let's not forget your constant companion, Bruce, the psychotic shark that faithfully patrols the waters around your raft. The cartoonish art design keeps the world fresh and entertaining as you build up your raft and a means to propel it toward a wide variety of points of interest and zany adventures. Raft is definitely an experienced survival sandbox fans won't want to let pass them by. Subnautica is quite a popular video game, and you've likely already heard of it. This is a first-person survival game set in the future. Players crash down onto an aquatic planet, and you'll have to explore the ocean depths to find precious resources to fix up a rocket in hopes of making a return back home. You'll need to gather food, drinkable water, and make sure you're not low on oxygen at any given moment. However, like other games on this list, a good portion of Subnautica is crafting. You'll need to gather resources to craft up hubs, diving equipment, and watercrafts to explore the underwater depths further. With that said, there are hostile aquatic creatures out there that will do quick work in devouring you if you're not careful. You Developer Uncone Worlds wisely didn't mess too much with the fundamentals that made the original Subnautica so great and builds on many of its strongest aspects. The environments are even more breathtaking and alien, and the game is once again based around a clear narrative. The story isn't quite as strong as in the original, and for some players, running around on land for part of the game just isn't what they signed up for. Additionally, the way the environments are laid out in the sequel isn't as intuitive or satisfying to explore, and the depth you can dive to has been nearly halved. For most players, however, below zero is just more of a good thing. As in the original, dying mostly occurs if you explore while unprepared, and creatures are even less aggressive it's also generally easier to find the resources you need, largely due to the smaller map.
Terraria is often compared to Minecraft. Visually, they are somewhat different, but there are specific similar characteristics between the two. For instance, it features exploration, crafting, building, and combat. However, this is a 2D-based procedurally generated action-paced game. If you enjoy sandbox games, then chances are you already played through a bit of Terraria. Similar to Minecraft as well, there is plenty of freedom to craft items. You'll craft everything from armor, weapons, furniture to decor. Despite being released back in 2011, this game still holds up well. It features some solid gameplay experience and continues to find newcomers regularly. Valheim puts players into the role of a recently deceased Viking, however, you won't find yourself freely roaming the halls of Valhalla. Instead, you're tossed into a new land called Valheim, where you'll need to defeat Odin's enemies to prove you worthy of moving on to Valhalla. It won't be an easy job, but fortunately, you can join in with some friends to aid you along the way. Players can work together to build up their kingdoms and ships to allow traversing the seas. Now, this is still an early access game, so you can expect plenty of updates as the studio continues progressing through development. Since its release, this game has blown up as players attempt to go through the procedurally generated world and battle against trolls, skeletons, and draugers.